Here with Washington State women's basketball head coach Cami Etheridge. Coach, your team picks up a 57-54 win over Southern Cal to sweep this weekend series against the LA schools. Just opening statements on today's win, and we'll open the floor for questions. Well, obviously, I, I say it every time. We, we win. You're just thrilled when you win. You know how hard it is. I, I thought we, we played a really, really good first half. Um, I thought it hurt us when we had to take Yo out, and I'm, I wasn't afraid to put her back in in the first half when she picked up two fouls. It's just we seemed to be getting great looks, and, and we were scoring well, and we were building on that lead, so I, I kept her on the bench. I don't know if that affected her, you know, kind of in the second half as far as just when you're in a groove and your coach doesn't let you go back in for a while. But uh, I thought our first half obviously won the game for us. You know, we, we really played well. We built the lead. Um, and you know the, I, and we'll have to look at the film and, and see what's out there. But I, I, I really did think we got some really great looks in the in the third and fourth quarters. Uh, it's things I told the team, you know, looks that we have to take. And if we're going to beat really all the best teams or anyone that we play, we have to make those shots that, because that's what that's what we're getting and, and that's what I think we're capable of. First half we made them. Second half it went a little bit dry, but. Um, I thought our team just was uh, poised enough at the end of the game to find a way to win a, a hard-fought game and, a, and a, you know, a tough matchup for us. Open the floor up for questions. We'll start with Jamie Vinnick, Kook fan. Go ahead, Jamie. Coach, uh, first off, congrats on the win. Thank you. Uh, I think Bella had maybe one of the biggest impacts of the game. You know, she, she gets 15. She's completely dominating the paint. She gets that third foul, and they start to score in the paint, comes back in, ends up plus 14 in the three-point game. I mean, how impactful, especially against the likes of, of, uh, of Jenkins and Peely and Marshall and just that really good front court. How impactful was Bella, you know, on the, especially on the defensive end today? Yeah, I, and I thought rebounding. Uh, you know, she ends up with eight. It felt like more than that. But I, I thought we really got hurt in, in rebounding when she wasn't in the game. Um, you know, it's just trying to teach her that that I thought, you know, she's played pretty well. Like, she, it didn't look like she was fouling. Like, she, some of her fouls have been in the past. You know, some are just like, the, those are no-brainers. But she still has a little bit of, she keeps contact when the offense is really kind of being not just drama, just creating contact and making it obvious that you're you're connected. And the defense never wins that battle. And at some point you just have to – she's – you know, some of her fouls tonight weren't even against a threat. You know, the the kid wasn't catching the ball. It wasn't an active play. It was just the ref just got sick of watching them, like, wrestle in the lane, and someone's going to lose that battle, and she did. And, you know, and just understanding that, that her her needing to be on the floor for us, we've just got to keep making her understand that. I thought Jess's minutes were good in the first half, um, but still I don't – I think the, the – defending those athletes coming downhill like they were trying to do against us and um, rebounding were the reasons that we needed her on the floor. And when she was on the floor, it was big time for us. I keep saying to Bella, she needs a double-double. She needs to help us with a double-double every night, and she got real close to that tonight. Charlize, maybe not her best shooting night against UCLA. Um, she comes back with, you know, with 20, a lot of that in the first half. You know, just how rewarding is it as a coach? You know, you have a player like that. She has an off night, but you don't necessarily have to worry that it's going to turn into three, four, five off nights because she's so talented that the next game can be one of these where she goes for 20 and that's the end of the, the quote-unquote slump. <laughs> well, <clears throat> she's she's so, you know, she's a special athlete and a special competitor, and, and she's really, she's, I mean, I think all these kids probably they feel just, terrible when we lose they feel like they've disappointed the world and um, that's hard to manage but I think she really does a nice job of, of somehow um, you know letting it go too like and that's a real talent too and she's she just kind of goes with the flow a little bit more and doesn't get as uptight or tense as as maybe some of the other players do that's just where she is and and I do think you know each game has a life of its own for her and I think she thinks she can you know, she's effective if she's on the floor, and she's effective if she's on the floor if she's not scoring because of all the other things she does. But clearly, it's a, it's it's great to have a, co a player like that that can score for you and get 20 a night. 
Just, uh, you know, one question. Just late in the game, it seemed like the execution was maybe a little iffy. There were some turnovers, um, you know, a couple of fouls. Is that something you feel like you maybe have to clean up as you go into this last stretch? Is, you know, those those late game situations of not getting to the line really even until the end and then going only one for four from the line uh, and then having to seal it with a defensive stop, which, of course, Crystal got. Yeah. Oh, I think we have to keep cleaning up everything. I thought, um, you know, maybe some play calling, which relied too much on the three point shot. Um, and took some early threes, but again, um, you're not. It, we are what we are, and and um, you know, on a night when Crystal doesn't make any shots really, and Ula doesn't really either, you know, you got to put the ball in the hands of the people that that seem to to really be making plays at the rim and behind the three point line. So it's a great night to have uh, Bella and, and Yo and and Charlize do what they did, but there's absolutely no question. You know, learning from this, um, uh, and and being better. You know, and and gosh, you're right. I wish we could get to the line more. Maybe that's just lack of the the play calls that that didn't make didn't get the physicality that they were getting on the other end. Those are everything is is up for debate, and and we have to fix and we have to be better because of that. But um, going three for nine from the free throw line that that'll get you beat. You know, so. Um, and we've got to, you know, we've got to be good at that, you know, and I'm, I'm proud of Bella to come back and make that second one because I thought that was a key one just to, to give us a chance to, you know, at least not to st stand on the three-point line a little bit. But I don't even think we played, we, we guarded that play well. I thought, you know, it's that whole idea that everybody's in the huddle going rebound, rebound, rebound. Well, then they take a bad two, you know, a two's not going to beat you. And so everybody runs in to get a rebound. And what happens? They, they have a chance to throw it out to someone standing behind the three-point line. That's a learning thing. You have, to, you have to grow in that. And thankfully, you know, Crystal is heady and understood what she needed to do. And then last thing, you know, I think I asked you about this Friday night too. You know, that, that game Wednesday, and again, just forget about it, flush it. But I, I think it would have been, I don't want to say easy, but it would have been not out of the question for, you know, a, a lesser team to kind of fold up and just and let that weigh on them. Instead, you guys come up with two really gritty and two really much needed victories. And what does that say about the toughness and the resolve of, of your group that they can flush that game, which I think Charlize called uh, the worst game of the season, and I think probably you would agree with that, and then come up with two wins against two very good teams? I, I don't know. I don't know. It just it just tells you where you are in building your culture and building your program. I think uh, my my associate head coach Lori, who was the head the scout of USC. I mean, we sat in that locker room tonight, and and it may be the first time ever that we're supposed to win this game. Like the the world, maybe the world still doesn't think we're supposed to, but the reality is is that locker room thinks it, and and the standings kind of say it. And that's a, that's we've gone places. We've we've grown in so many ways where, you know, we're considered, you know, a pretty good team and a pretty good program. So it just goes from that. Your question is is right on. We're we've 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 grown a lot in our toughness, in our resiliency, in our um, uh, you know the chemistry that we have, the the competitiveness that we bring on a day to day basis. Um, and, and, you know, and part of that is when adversity hits and when you're not very good, you know, you got to own it and you got to just play through it. And then if it's something as drastic as that game was, which it was for all of us and devastating, you just, you, yeah, you flush it. You move on and you try to grow from it and you know that you can be better the next night. And I just, I give this team a lot of credit um, and give these players a lot of credit because they're, they they can do that and they've they've shown that they can do that and we've got to continue to to be to to grow that in our program. Luke Kilgore from KEGR, go ahead, Luke. Uh, Cami, congratulations on the win. Thanks. Definitely a, a nail biter. Is it's been a tumultuous week. I know Jamie uh, kind of alluded and asked about that too. Um, going from a, a, a big low to a, a big high on Friday, how did the mindset of the locker room just kind of change throughout the week? And and how are you guys feeling preparing for this game after the nail biter on Friday? Yeah, I mean, again, I think the the Wednesday game. Because it was three games in a row, it almost it, that's the beauty of that game. Like we didn't have time, 
if if it had been a Sunday game, we would have watched so much of that film <laughs> that the team would have been just depressed, you know. But because that was just a you had one day to get ready for the next team, twi- you know, for all three games, you just you had to move on. So I just think our team turned the page after that that Oregon game and got really really focused. I thought UCLA was really good, and uh, we had to play a, a really tough. Uh, and competitive game and stay with it in that game. Obviously, the the exp- the the coming back after getting losing a lead, you know, showed some signs of of our growth and where we're going as a program. That was just huge for us to win that game in the way that we did, and then to emotionally not not stay there and know that you've got an unbelievably um, you know t- you know just a talented team that can come in here and beat you any way imaginable and and how are you going to do that on a 12 o'clock game so um you know i'm glad we don't have any more three game weeks i think we need you know a little bit more rest and getting back to that uh but i just think we handled that whole week you know pretty amazingly and um again players that play a lot of minutes they they found a way to to get us to two and one this week and and i think we grew a lot in uh, what we think we can be as a team. And for Crystal, um, only one point on the, on the afternoon, uh, but makes the game-saving steal as she also made the game-winning bucket and free throw on Friday. Um, how do you think, and, and they talk about a, a lot about how some players just know how to win. Uh, what do you think about Crystal's ability to stay composed? She's been in the NCAA tournament. Uh, do you think that, that helps her ability when it comes down to these pressure situations? Yeah, I mean, it, she was raised to be in these moments. You know, her mom was was taking her into FIBA international competitions when she was couldn't walk probably all the way up. So uh, the mindset and the competitiveness and the IQ and uh, the leadership that she has, I think she's always had that. She's had to grow it and and get to know and and have great relationships with their teammates to be able to bring them along. But she is a great voice. She is a great voice in huddles. Charlize, too. Um, She is a great voice in the locker room. She's been through a lot. And um, there's not very many situations where she's she's never saying the wrong things. You know, and that that is the super senior. And that's her mindset. And she is a, a really special player that I've been fortunate enough to coach as long as I've been able to. Awesome. And uh, <clears throat> you kind of sang the praises of Johanna Tedder earlier, um, having to bench her at some key moments when she was l- looking pretty pretty hot from the field. Um, when the three-point shots weren't falling in the second half, she seemed to take a different approach and try to drive inside and took that mid-range jumper that ended up falling. Um, as someone who is mostly known as your sharpshooter, <clears throat> excuse me, seems like she really kind of took control and, and made the right calls there to go on the interior instead. No, and I thought she had a great little pocket pass to Bella on one of those. Again, <clears throat> people really have to go over on her. They can't go under screens. Uh, she needs to get good at, at, at re- making those reads. Can she get her own shot at the rim? Can she make a little drop pass to a post that's coming down down downhill? Or that pull-up, you know, it's not probably her favorite shot, but she's more than capable of making it. Um, we've got to keep doing that because that's how they're, they're playing her. They're going to take something away. If they're going to take the three away, she's got to be effective in that. And I just love that she came off the bench and, and kind of read that and fa- found that and knew that that's what she needed to take versus, um, you know, we love it when she gets threes. We want her to get threes, but she clearly, uh, she really made some good plays for us and, and – and that's playing not very many minutes since she got into foul trouble. So I thought she had a great game tonight. And uh, just last question here. Charlize uh, and Ula both played 40 minutes today. We know how Charlize can impact the game in, in a variety of ways and lead this team. Uh, but for Ula, uh, four points this afternoon, a few assists, a steal, and a couple blocks. I mean, w- especially when Bella was sitting out, how – I mean, how good do you feel about Ula to be reliable and to just kind of play defense wherever and just impact the game? Yeah, it is so important for our team. She, she, uh, I think you hit it. Like, I keep saying it. Ula is a calming factor for our team. Everybody wants to be on her team. She, she just has a way to make the offense better, 
calm us and 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 d she does whatever we need her to do but boy on the other end defensively she really can uh, create some situations for us to be able to play small. She can guard the bigs of the other team. She could match up with Peely and, and not let Peely get to her sweet spot. Um, you know, and, and again, her IQ and her, you know, understanding a scout and relaying that and being the voice that she is, um, it, she's another one. She's another one. Like, if she's not scoring, it doesn't matter. She's doing everything else imaginable to help us win.